Hello and welcome. In this video, I will show you how an integrated process with work orders, timesheets, and invoices from Fieldglass and an SAP backend system looks from a user perspective. In the first part, I will pull up a work order that I created and which will then be confirmed by the supplier. The data will be sent to the SAP backend system where a purchase requisition and a purchase order are generated automatically. Let's take a look at the work order first, which I prepared before the demo. In the upper part, we have the job title and the ID of the work order. We can see the period of the services ordered, we can see the supplier and the location of the work. Here we have the total ordered amount of the services and the referenced SAP cost center. Please know that the selectable cost centers, along with other master data, is provided automatically from the SAP back system to field glass periodically or in real time where supported. Now the work order needs to be approved by the supplier. Therefore, I logged in under the supplier's account. Here we see again all relevant data, such as the job title, work order ID, the performance period of the services, the buying company, location of the services, the rates and number of working hours ordered. I now accept this work order and in the next part, show you how this is reflected in the SAP backend system. I am logged in at the connected SAP backend now. The work order was turned into a purchase requisition and then a purchase order automatically for the selected supplier. We see all relevant information from the work order on the overview page. A service line item got created with a cost center account assignment. We see here the line item description, the performance period, the total ordered amount of the services, the site or plant code, and on the item detail page, the linked cost object and account assignment category. You also might have a purchase order approval process in place in the SAP backend system. In this case, the work order for the supplier gets activated only after final approval of the PO. The supplier then gets informed by the system and the worker invitation process is triggered. In the next part, we will look at the timesheet and invoicing process. Anytime the worker completed a timesheet, for instance on a weekly or monthly basis, it is sent to the buyer for approval. In our demo system, we activated the auto invoicing feature, which then also generates an invoice directly after the buyer approved a timesheet. Both the invoice and the approved timesheet from Fieldglass will instantly create the corresponding documents in the SAP backend system. Let's take a look at Fieldglass from the external worker's point of view. Here, he would enter and comment the worked hours. We can see the timesheet ID, the worker ID, the time period for the timesheet is shown, and the external worker can enter his working hours on the proposed cost object from the work order. In this example, it is a weekly timesheet. After completion, the external worker submits the timesheet back to the buyer for approval. As a buyer, I received a message from Fieldglass that a timesheet was filed for approval. We see the name of the worker, the timesheet ID, the performance period, the number of hours ordered, and see how much of the budget is used, and to which SAP cost object the costs will be posted. I will approve the timesheet now, and we see the status instantly changed to invoiced because auto invoicing is switched on. Based on the approved timesheet data, a supplier invoice was automatically created. Let's have a look at it in the SAP field glass. After payment of the invoice by the SAP backend system, the status would change to paid. In this final part of the demo, I log into the SAP backend system again to show you how all these documents are reflected in the system. I am pulling up the purchase order history in the backend system. We see three documents created, the goods receipt, the invoice, and the service entry sheet. We can see the document number, the posting date, and the amount. Let's go to the service entry sheet. Here we see the connect to the field glass system with the work order number. We can see the performance period and the worker's unique ID. We also have the reference to the timesheet with the timesheet ID. And finally, let's take a look at the invoice. 
Here we can see the reference to SAP Field Glass with the invoice ID. Thanks for watching the video. I hope I could give you a good impression of how well the integration of Field Glass with an SAP backend system works when using the SAP Field Glass integration add on. Goodbye.